welcome highfalutin ski bump podcast episode number 287 it is your pals mario and brian mario what's up been yeah. so long yeah it has been a couple of weeks and i feel like it's been very redundant in us saying that things have been busy which they very much have been family stuff life stuff good stuff bad stuff. stuff strikes and gutters peaks and valleys you know yep. life life happened but guess what labor day hit summer is over now things are getting back to it. normal you can start feeling getting darker earlier which oh, yeah. is a bit of an adjustment but i'm a fan it means winter is coming we're excited yeah things are bubbling up on the horizon things are getting very exciting we're going to have some cool stuff to talk about in the next few weeks. We have some cool interviews that are coming up next few weeks. September, it's awesome that we're past summer, but it is a little purgatory-ish. We're yeah. going to embrace it, though. We'll be getting our schedule a little more solidified, so it's back to normal. Got a lot, a lot of time to plan in September, I think. We got stuff to plan, yes. But we want to thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Please check us out, skibumpodcast.com. Run the socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, untapped at Ski Bum Podcast. Send us an email, Ski Bum Podcast at gmail.com. YouTube, go there, watch us, subscribe. That'd be awesome. Go to your favorite podcasting apps, rate and subscribe. Mario, let's kick this off the way we always do. It's time for our pray today. Well, today is a, a very rare occasion for me because I am drinking from my Apre nice filtered water. <laughs> That's all Special I'm drinking. Florida filtered water. Now, I am having something else that's just as good, but better from the river. Yeah. Well, it's so funny that you're drinking filtered water today because did you know that today, the day they're recording this, Wednesday, September 14th, is actually National Sobriety Day. Boom. See? I'm it's sober. Almost like you knew that. Well, if I'm high, but I'm sober, that still counts, right? Um, no, but maybe. I'm kind of sober. Yeah, well, today is National Sober Day. Nice. But there's Sobriety Day, which is April 20th, which is kind of funny. But yeah, today's National Sober Day. Wow. I don't know why that's a thing, how it became a thing, but it is a thing. And funny enough, I too am keeping it sober. See? On National Sober Day. Boom. But I went a different route. I didn't have just water. I have, and let me look it up. I've already got my link to it here. And you can't see it because it's in my awesome Yeti Ski Bum Podcast mug. Nice. Which keep on podcast.com slash shop. These are sold out, but we're going to have new Ooh. ones eventually. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, Hopefully one. I am drinking Organifi green juice, original flavor. Hmm. Wow. Brian, what the hell is that? And what I is, am trying and what does it to taste like the link. You know what? It's actually pretty good. It's the original green juice. It is made uh, it was recommended by ben greenfield so i don't know if any of you follow him oh, yeah. he's got he's a like a biohacker and a podcaster and pretty interesting guy so he recommended this this is like his go-to it was between this and athletic greens i went with this one for some reason whatever hmm. look at the price i'm like jesus that's expensive as hell but i bought it like months ago and i'm drinking like i, I bought it in april and it's like i don't drink it as much as i probably should but if i did drink it as much as i should it cost me a ton of money Hmm. Yeah, I spend so much money on powder every month and none of it is like like powder powder it's like shakes and coffee creamers it's nothing nothing like it's not cocaine it's not heroin it's just <laughs> not weird eating natural stuff powders yeah yeah so this one Organifi green juice organic super food powder it's actually pretty good it tastes like not sweet fruit juice like sweet, but you know, like sweet as in natural sweet, not like yeah, Hawaiian punch where it's you know, cups and cups of sugar in there. Well, I've had some of the like that's why I like the regular, like I'll make I actually just I'm I'm back to the uh Nutribullet. 
Um, so I just bought some, I'm going to do spinach this week, but I do mainly like that. And then a little bit of stuff to kind of give it some flavor. And it's so much when I have one of those powders or, or a lot of the drinks, uh, you know, the shake drinks that are already done, they, um, they have a lot of sugar in them and you taste yeah. it like, wow, they're very like, sweet. I remember we used to get that Odwalla stuff. Yeah. And that stuff was so good. And then you look at it, you're like, oh, no wonder. There's like 40 grams of sugar. Like the mango yeah. one was the really good one. But that's where you went from like, that was you going, you know, everybody was going from like sweet ass, you know, soft drinks to that. And you're like, oh, this is so much better for you. It's not as sweet. And you're now you have gap. it and you're like, damn, this is too sweet. Like what the hell? Yeah. So this one, I got the green one and it's got gently dried super greens now you can get all of your nutrient filled superfoods in one glass for powerful stress relief and immune support with just one little tiny scoop and eight ounces of water hmm. organic greens powder in a bottle imagine drinking some of the world's premium nourishing superfoods in one glass nice it's got where's the list of things that has and here we go each scoop is packed with nutritious nutritious whole foods including ashwagandha Moringa, spirulina, cholera, cholera, corella. Not cholera. That's like a disease, right? Cholera. Cholera. Chlorella. Chlorella, coconut water, wheatgrass, red beet, matcha green tea, turmeric, lemon, and prebiotic powder. Look at that. There you go. So that's what I'm drinking. Trying to keep it healthy. Dude, the last, and it's funny because they say that August is actually the second. The month, the second month, ugh, trying to like phrases right. December is the worst month for people eating. That's when they go off the wagon for food because of Christmas, holidays, whatever. Oh, but yeah. August is the second worst month of that. Second, like, worst food off the wagony month. I think yeah. because everyone's like trying to like be skinny and slim for bathing suit season, you know, April, May, June. And then it's July. over. It's a celebration like, of eating. Dude, that I hit, I hit the ice cream wagon hard. Did you? It was so good Damn. all summer. Like, I, we didn't have much ice cream. Then Benjamin's birthday, we got an ice cream cake. Oh, that was it. Went to town on that. And then you get, and you start getting the taste. Like, Once it hits your lips, oh, you're just like, you just oh, more more. I'm hooked. There was one day I had to go to pick up barbecue for dinner. I stopped at the store on the way and saw that Ben and Jerry's was on sale. Boom. Ben and Jerry's. I got two containers of Ben and Jerry's because it was on sale. Damn. I go to the barbecue place, check out the barbecue order. Turns out this place, they added another store. My wife ordered from the wrong store, which was further oh. away. So you just but, ate. Dude, I ate three quarters of a pint of Ben and Jerry's tiramisu on the way to get barbecue. <laughs> Damn. It's like a professional eater. You're like and on the, the way eating. The tiramisu one is weird because it has like the top. It was one of those special ones where they have like a topping inside. So you open the thing and there's like a thick layer of dark chocolate. Oh, wow. So cool. you got to smash through the dark chocolate to get to all the tiramisu ice cream goodness. And I, like I smashed that, through, baby. I smashed through. There's no <laughs> turning back. <laughs> once so once you break that seal, you, you can't. So I got that one and I got the weird Netflix one they have, which was like peanut butter ice cream with crushed up like chocolate yeah. pretzels. Yeah, I had that one. It was all right. The pretzels threw me off after all. I was like, it was fun at first, but then I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, about but that. you, if you switch back and forth between that and the overly ridiculous chocolate tiramisu, it's a perfect, like perfect synergy I, with those yeah. two. Yeah, I think they need to put that together in there. So ice cream cake, Ben and Jerry's. Then there was another like Hagen Dazs sale. Like it just all went off the rails. And Damn. now I've, I'm, I finally, after everyone got on the sourdough bandwagon like two years ago, like when the pandemic and lockdown first started. Yeah. I'm finally on board. I've been, I've been craving goddamn sourdough. I actually, just really? before, there's a local place that makes sourdough bread here. I do not I, like sourdough. To each his own. It's not we were a up sourdough in Connecticut on Labor Day weekend and went to this local bakery and it had these sourdough breakfast sandwiches and they were so goddamn good. And then I started going down the rabbit hole about like, all right, how do I make, Fucking sourdough, like every other asshole did two years ago. Nice. And then it's like the five day starter process. You got, you have to oh. feed, you have to feed the starter. <sighs> Keep the starter happy. Like, uh, nice. I didn't make it yet. I have these. 
I still have to make my stolen, which I always say I'm going to do. And I still have never. That's done. not sourdough. <laughs> well, no, but that's the thing. It's like a backlog. Like I got to make the stolen first and yeah. then I got to make like, there's all the things you I gotta have, have priority order. I have these delusions of grandeur of what I'm going to actually have the time to do. Yeah. Wow. It's like you start thinking all the shit you want to do and you're like, I need like two weeks of just doing all this ridiculous shit that I want to do. Well, while I'm depressed at my you know regular job, while my garden is all full of weeds, while there's trees growing into everything, like oh, I'm going to just be, you know, jerking off with my fucking sourdough starter. Like my wife would like, <laughs> hit me with a hammer. So that's you know, it. Got to prioritize. Oh, uh, but yeah. So I, I ordered like two loaves, a local, a local bakery. They're not a bakery, but they bake, they don't have a shop yet. There's some sort of zoning thing. They can't get parking. So they have a theoretical place where there's an oven and mixers where bread gets made. And that's where you get your sourdough stuff. They go to it. They drop it off at a different place. Like they make it and you got to go pick it up somewhere that's else. That's nice and shady. That's like buying weed the old way. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like, like free legal weed. It's like you like get raw milk or something like dangerous. Oh man, I talked to Ray Ray. He said, come down here and I can get my weed here. <laughs> so I ordered two goddamn loaves of sourdough and I'm just going to wreck shop as soon as they get home. I got the butter already at room temperature. Oh, damn. We're going to make sweet, sweet love to the sourdough and the butter. And it's just going to- You're looking forward to the milk. sourdough. Damn. It's just- like for me, I'm I was so good for the longest time, That's and funny. it just I just downshifted into fat fuck, and now I'm just like blazing down the road. Big fat fuck, it's coming. So, hey, hey, hey! Do what you gotta do. But I'm trying to drink this green stuff to kind of balance it a little bit. So I got on board with the uh, the whole magic spoon, and it, you and don't like sourdough? I just why why not? I don't know. Fuck the sourdough. I'm doing magic spoon. I sent Bodie six boxes. Cause he's up there playing hockey now. Said him six boxes. He got it today. He's like, oh, I had, a, I had a. He got it today. Got home from practice, or whatever. Back in his school dorms, fucking kids living the dream. Tears into magic spoon already. We we talked to him before. He's like, oh yeah, I already ate some magic spoon. So I need six more boxes. It's like those, you ate them all in one hey, day. It's great. I mean, like four hundred dollars of cereal, bro. It's low sugar, high protein cereal. Well, I I set up the um. The uh, you know, the repeating buy because you get like 25% off. So that's where it becomes more economical, closer to buying cereal in the store, which is like cereal in the store is like 15 grams of sugar. It's disgusting. Yeah. Like per serving. This is three carbs per serving and eleven grams of protein. Boom. Eleven grams of protein. That's without the milk. So the only reason it came up is I'm on Ben Greenfield's uh, site and he has it on there. Oh, he does. There you go. One of his recommended things. He's a bad man. Tell you, man, One Magic Spoon. Yeah. It's not it. sponsors. None of these people are sponsors at this None point. None of them are sponsors. Bunch Perhaps of... we should reach out to them. Bunch of ghetto cool? ass. No. <laughs> Bunch of ghetto bitches. Well, you know who's not ghetto? Who? Let's go to Ski News. Pacific. Group Resort makes the winning seventy-six million dollar bid for Jay Peak. Seventy. What was the previous bid? It was like sixty something. Or... Fifty-eight. Damn. That's what they started at. Let's see. So, congratulations. Congratulations. Group Resorts and congratulations to Jay Peak because it's been sort of a weird, purgatory-ish time for them. I got a sound for that one. That's what it was like. That's the sound of the, when you're sitting in the tram waiting for the guy to crawl on the top with the wrench and knock oh, the ice off. Awesome. As you're standing in there watching chairlift after chairlift after chairlift go flying up next to you, getting 10 extra feet of vertical with your tram versus that chair. That's right. So we digress. Pacific Group Resorts Inc. was the highest <laughs> bidder. For JP Resort during an auction last Wednesday, according to a court filing, the Park Damn. City, Utah based company offered $76 million for the Northeast Kingdom Ski Resort. The filing showed the sale still requires approval from Judge Darren P. Gales, who has presided over the receivership in federal court in Miami since April of 2016. Regulators brought a civil enforcement action that year against the resort's former owner. Ariel Quiros and its president, Bill Stenger, in what became the largest investor fraud case in Vermont's history. Damn. A hearing on the resort sale is set for September 16th. 
Hopefully that's the day this podcast comes out. According to the filing Thursday morning by Michael Goldberg, the court appointed receiver who has overseen JP for the past six years. Proceeds are expected to be distributed to defrauded foreign investors on a pro rata basis. According to an earlier court filing from Goldberg, Pacific Group Resorts has made had made an initial bid of $58 million for the resort, according to earlier court filings leading up to the auction. A day-long auction closed to the public took place Wednesday with multiple bidders, Pacific Group said in a press release Thursday. So basically, they got jacked for an extra $18 million bucks. Damn. Well, you know, if we decide to put in a last-minute bid separate, you know, on the side, we might be able to beat that bed. We have to pay off Darren P. Gales, the judge, the honorable Darren P. Gales, who would probably not take our. We go to the same country club. Did anyway. Of course. We'll see him we, at the We pub. both belong to the Hermitage Club. <laughs> That's right. In Vermont there. So uh, Pacific Group Resorts. So they own Wisp Resort, hmm. which is in the D.C. area. Top snowmaking system in the world, 26 acres. I don't know exactly where this is. It's somewhere in the Washington, Pittsburgh, Maryland ish area. Hmm. Wisp. Ah, McHenry, Maryland. There you go. So they own that. They own Mount Washington in British Columbia, not to be confused with Mount Washington in New Hampshire. They own Wintergreen Resort, hmm. Ragged Mountain which is up in New Hampshire and Powderhorn Mountain out in Colorado. Oh, wow. Wintergreen is in the Blue Ridge Mountains. Good old Shenandoah National Good Forest. Old Shenandoah. Yeah. So it seems like a pretty cool spot and it's surprising. And I don't know if they were able to disclose it or since it was not public, they could keep a secret. If the big ones, you know, did... Altera did Epica yeah. Vail, did they put a who, bid in? Who bid on it, right? There was a lot of rumors going around, like some other local resorts, like possibly, you know, some of those uh groups that have one, two, three resorts trying to maybe add Jay to that, but it didn't happen. So no. here we are. Small group. Some important information about this. They said that all existing season passes pass reciprocity multi-resort pass agreements at J, including the Indy Pass, will be honored for the 2022-2023 season. Yeah, all right. That, that's that. very important. So that was one of the big concerns with people, knowing, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have a lot of Indy Pass fans, and we're huge fans of the Indy Pass. Knowing that they were keeping that was, was big and made a lot of people happy. What happens next mm -hmm. year? Who knows? We will find out. One thing that was kind of interesting was that the $76 million bid was closer to the $85 million assessed value that the town of Jay had given it. It had previously assessed it at 121 back in 2020, uh, but changed it to 85 in a settlement after resort officials challenged the appraisal. That's weird. Sounds a little shady. I also don't know. They still have some significant debt from that whole EB5 Ponzi debacle thing. that yeah. happened to Ponzi a bunch of years ago. I think it was $100 million, $110 million, something like that. They still may owe. And I wonder, I mean, I'm sure they had to open the books. Oh, yeah. For I think they were open, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think they, you know, had to allow any potential bidders to see what they were getting themselves into and Hey, they still went forward, so wow. it's cool that um, JP has new ownership. Hopefully, it will stay as awesome as it was, and we can only wait and see. That's pretty cool. I love how, like, so I'm going through the Vermont Digger. They um, they said the scheme was based on a proposed development known as the ANC Bio Vermont, which led to indictments of the criminal charges so they were actually pitching that they were going to set up like a a biodevelopment facility biomedical research facility yeah in like newport rhode island right yeah it's just really weird so if they like, just would have kept their freaking greedy mouths shut and just we just kept going with this one <laughs> they might have been okay that's so weird how it yeah. came out 
It's pretty crazy. Wow. Speaking of crazy, Altera Mountain is adding ski butlers to its portfolio of companies. Look at that. So today, Altera, it was September 8th, they announced, um, Altera announced that they acquired ski butlers, a leading ski equipment and delivery service based in Utah. Ski but butlers will, will still remain a standalone business with ongoing operations in 50 ski destinations while maintaining its current staff and leadership. So it's interesting that they, they bought this. I mean, I think we did something. It was kind of like ski butlers. It was through a local. Um, in Jackson, was, right? In Jackson. They kind of just dropped off the skis. Like, yeah, I got some more on the truck if you want to try them on. But we kind of gave them all our measurements anyway, and they just adjusted them right there in the room. It was pretty cool. Um, it was kind of, yeah. It's, it's an interesting business. Yeah. And I think that was the last time that I – decided i was gonna rent skis on a ski trip <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah I had like three different pairs of skis it's you know yeah. again if you're gonna rent skis like the problem is you don't know what skis you're getting from some of these places i think ski butler's a little more on point because i i remember looking at them on a few trips and then deciding some other stuff for go to a local ski scary and rent um if they don't have brand new foil skis for me to use, I, I can't ski on anything else. Can't do it. That's, that's it. This is all I ski on. Yeah. Uh, those are the Kessels, right? No, they the foil. Get... Remember the ones, the uh, the Schwarzenegger ones that are like $50,000? Yeah. Oh, yeah, of course. They had some those... sort of like weird, like there was one tree left in the world that was of that particular make and they cut it down and made skis out of it. <laughs> that's right. And it's now the, extinct. The they extinct. had like, like a weird like oboe case that they would use for these skis <laughs> they took the fancy look pivot bindings and painted them gold and made them seem exotic like hilarious just you look up foil skis absolutely awesome one of the best products ever made <laughs> so they're saying they set a standard for guest satisfaction in the ski industry um yeah and they do have them uh whistler they have them in france italy so it's pretty cool they're they're expanding to a number of North American destinations starting with mammoth in winter for 22, 23. And yeah, it's pretty cool. They built it up and then they sold it, sold it off. Why not? It's a great move. The, the issue, you know, you kind of alluded to it before, like you just don't know what you're going to get. I mean, I, I remember again, I went to like three different pairs of skis. Like I didn't like, they were like beat up. They weren't tuned to my expectations. Like again, when you're, <laughs> If you're just going with the Hoboken Ski Club and you're just going to go and ski for an hour and then drink the whole day, fine. Well, so what a lot of those do is they drop off skis and then they stick you with whatever shit they have if they don't have anything new. And they're like, well, you can come back tomorrow and either stop at one of the ski places on the mountain or right. we'll come back. And it's kind of like, so that's what they do is like, because I did the same thing. I did something like that in jackson yeah when we were there remember that that was what we did we we actually rented from the local but they had on the mountain they had like a little hut I remember the guy had all different skis there and he's like yeah they'll they'll send up whatever you want so we like we picked out different skis and the next day they would be there and we'd we'd ski on those yes mm -hmm. that was pretty cool um so yeah i mean you, you could find this Ever, it's good. It's good that they're thinking about this as a service because think about how much of a pain in the ass. Number one, to travel with skis is, and number two, to then get skis when you're on mountain when you when you first get up there. Yeah, you know these that's, cats come to your place and they just do it for you. That's kind of nice. Yeah, that's you know always one of the most annoying things about traveling. I mean, you guys had the experience earlier this year when you're out in Crest Butte. You get your, uh, you know, you go out on a trip, you're excited, you got a couple days, and your skis get lost. You don't get yeah. them that first day. You're like, uh, what do I do? Uh, what do I do? Yeah. Yeah. Luckily, they, they hooked us up because it was a media trip. They hooked us up with rentals, and I was like, all right, cool. At least we don't lose a day. But yeah, if but... we didn't have that, we would have lost a whole day. Yeah. Not cool. So it's a cool company, cool product. And if you need skis, ski butlers, and you're got an icon pass, ski butlers could be a new fun option for you. Yeah. What's also new and fun is changing the name of your mountain. Shawnee Peak 
not to be confused with Shawnee Mountain in Pennsylvania, Shawnee Peak in Maine is now Pleasant Mountain. Pleasant They've out- Mountain. announced an official change to the name and logo. Hmm. This past February, Boyne Resorts made it clear that after acquiring Shawnee Peak in 2021, they were heavily considering a name change for the small ski mountain in Maine. A recent press release and website update has confirmed that as of September 14th, the ski area's name will once again be Pleasant Mountain. Hmm. This is actually pretty funny. Here's a little history for you. When the mountain was first opened to skiing in 1938, it was named after its physical location, Pleasant Mountain. In 1988, the mountain was purchased by a new ownership group and the area's name was changed to Shawnee Peak to match the group's other mountain, Shawnee Mountain. Unfortunately, that name change, first of all, totally tossed the original name out the window with little consideration towards guests' opinions. Second of all, and possibly more importantly, the name Shawnee Peak comes from the Shawnee tribe, a tribe that historically had zero presence in the state of Maine. Uh, <laughs> White people, eh, whatever. Anyway, Boyne Resorts, which owns both Sugarloaf and Sunday River, on top of Pleasant Mountain, didn't decide upon this name change overnight. Instead, according to General Manager Ralph Lewis's letter, they asked for and considered feedback from the public, which after several months ended up heavily favoring the change. Hmm. So they own that company owns Shawnee Mountain. The previous one did. Oh, the previous one they one. bought it from. Yeah. And Shawnee and Shawnee. That's pretty Shawnee interesting. Shawnee and Shawnee. So there could have been like sh- 10 Shawnees possibly. Yeah, that's right. See, 1988. That's when that happened. Nobody cared. Like you just like, like yeah, nobody whatever. like nobody nobody was like putting a big stink. Like, hey man, like we don't like this name. It's offensive. Like they're just like, yeah, I'm just going to work and you know. Just doing I think whatever. their plan was to buy more mountains, name them Shawnee something, and say this is our tribe of mountains. What do you think? Right? Could have been an ultimate plan. Like a could have been. They're trying to like, Genghis Khan those mountains. Like a Mar- Marvel Comics kind of thing. Genghis like Khan wasn't an Indian. Ah, whatever. <laughs> Genghis Khan whatever. the place. Oh, that'd be good. Like a Genghis Khan resort where everything is like Mo- Mongolian barbecue style. <laughs> that would be what? awesome, right? And All you never day. know when like Mongols come out of the trees and just like hunt you down. <laughs> Hunting you down on horseback, just like coming at you. Yeah, yurts everywhere. It'd be great. The bow and arrows with like coupons are firing at you. You so, get a free appetizer. So at what point do you think they're going to combine amusement parks and ski resorts? Because it's going to happen. They're getting closer and closer. Like they edge, like, you know, uh, J Peak has like the water park inside. Like, so you ski and then you got water park. But at what point is it going to be like, they, a lot of them have mountain coasters. You know what I mean? Like you're going to be skiing. And then in the middle of skiing, it's going to be, hey, let's do this ride. Well, like, that's that's kind of the big thing is you have to be a four season resort now almost to yeah. be able to keep staff, to keep things functioning, keep interest, to sell condos. Like there's so many other pieces of the puzzle now. It's really not just let's go to the mountain and slide down and have fun. There's yeah. a lot of other things you have to think about to keep that running. And that's that's sort of the new model. When do they get to the point where they start hollowing out the mountain and doing stuff inside the mountain? Sorry, but yeah, like a real space mountain. Like drill through it. In fact, doing stuff in the mountain. Yeah, like, well, think about it. They could have like a tunnel in and an elevator up so you get rid of lists altogether. Like Zermatt, like the inclinator thing they had? Yeah. What was the that fin- thing called? Funicular. The funicular, yeah. A couple yeah. of those. I like inclinator. That that actually is pretty cool. That's what they call the ones at the uh, Luxor, right? Oh, is it? I think so in Vegas, like you know that because it's the pyramid. Oh yeah, they're called inclinators instead of elevators. Nice, the inclinator. Yeah, very cool. Imagine they have ski in, ski out. Like you just ski and you like drop into your hotel. Oh yeah, right like, in. You, you get like GPS coordinates. Like you ski to a GPS coordinate, and there's like some sort of like tube you just kind of like go down, and you're like in your hotel room. Just a big vestibule, a big. Like vestibule with an elevator, and you go in there, and boom, you're right I'm in. I'm talking right to your room. I'm talking ski to a spot, and boom, boom. into your room. Into your room. Boom. Imagine that. Off. Right there. 
Is that really that crazy? Is that really that crazy in 2022 with the way things are going? Not, Not with the way things are going. Not too crazy. Yeah. So we shall see. <laughs> pleasant Mountain. Keeping it in pleasant. Keep it pleasant. All right. And then next up we have the Colorado Ski Area openings for the 22-23 season. So some of these are opening really quick. So you get about, about a month away. Yeah, so October already. You got A Basin, Keystone, and Loveland are opening. They they're have, always going to battle it out. They're battling. And Wolf Creek's in that mix too. Those ones, those. Yeah, Wolf Creek November four is what Keystone's never the first. It's usually A Basin, Loveland, and Wolf Creek. Those are the. They was battle. Those are the scrap the scrappers for that first, first chair. Well, it's funny. They say mid-October, but they're not saying a date because they're all going to try to scoop each other. Exactly. And it, there's there's been rumors that they're getting the guns ready. Well, wasn't it like Loveland or something a few years ago? They announced that they were opening like one day. Then another company announced they were going Jumped the them. day like, before. We're opening this afternoon. Like, fuck you. And then they just went and opened that afternoon. It was like, we're, we're, we're getting the scoop. We're not getting beat. Yeah, I forget. Was it Wolf Creek? I think they opened first last year. It was one. Yeah, they're like, like, oh, congrats on opening Friday. We're opening in like an hour. So in like, an hour. Come on yeah. down. We're opening. And it could be two people on the mountain, but as long as they're officially open, that's, that's it. All that matters. Don't hate the player. Hate the game. <laughs> um, let's see what else. Breckenridge Vale, Copper, their early Eldora, Purgatory, Beaver Creek. Uh, so that's kind of middle-ish. Then you get yeah, into 18th through. That, I think Beaver Creek, Crested Butte, Steamboat, Aspen, Snowmass, Telluride, Hallison, Powder. That's all like right, like Thanksgiving week. Just before Thanksgiving. Yeah. Like yeah. That week. And then Monarch around Thanksgiving, Echo Mountain late November. Then there's Cooper, Sunlight, Aspen Highlands. Those are all December, Buttermilk. Buttermilk's then, late, 17th of December. 17th and then yet to announce and i think this is because of the facilities um granby ranch hesperus kendall mountain silverton and winter park i know silverton i don't think they have any grooming right no i think that's pretty they might have some but it's very very little they just got their one chair yeah helicopter hike up stuff oh, place looks just so awesome so it all depends on how much dumping they get. Yeah. And then I'm surprised Winter Park. Cause that's a yeah. pretty, you know, that's still one of the first couple you hit when you take I 70 out. Yeah. And they're doing some big enhancements too over the next couple of years. Well, maybe, maybe that's, that's the why reason they're why. not going to rush. They figure mm -hmm. they'll keep making enhancements. Yeah. We will see who, uh, who gets the, tr the crown, the coveted Colorado first to open crown. One small problem with all of that is there is an 80 ass percent chance of winter La Nina and 91% chance of fall La Nina. So what does now, that mean? This is a long article that I read. We're not going to go into the details of climate, what makes La Nina, the Pacific temperature. The, the, uh, it, that's just too much. Like Nobody cares. What we care about is is it happening and what it means for skiing. You got you just got to explain it in like in like monster movie terms. Godzilla's coming and there's <laughs> a, right like the well, heat is coming this way and sort of. So, well, here's the crazy thing. So, ninety one percent chance of La Nina September through November and eighty percent through early winter November through January. High agreement through the winter that there is a lot of uncertainty about how long it will last and how we will transition to neutral conditions current forecaster consensus gives la nina the edge through january through march 54 percent um there's more information here so they've been tracking la nina winters since 1950 of those only one 2016 2017 changed to neutral in December through February four transition to neutral in January through March and one by February through April two March to May and 16 in April, June or later. 
So it's one of those things when La Nina is here, it tends to stick around for a decent amount of time. And one other interesting thing is that this will only be the third La Nina three-peat on record. Wow. And the first not to follow a strong El Nino event. Hmm. So this is actually like an unprecedented weather system that we could be going into here. So anything's possible, I guess, right? Anything's possible. Anything's possible. And based on just one quick image that they have in this article, and this was from the NOAA ENSO website. If you look at North America, what this tends to mean is that the Pacific Northwest is wetter because the jet stream kind of goes like along Alaska, along the Canadian border, along British Columbia, and then dips down kind of into the Midwest and then up the East coast, the, you know, kind of Northeast New England, East coast. So Pacific Northwest wet, everything in like the plains, upper plains into central Canada, all the way to Alaska, colder and wet in sort of the Midwest. And then the Northeast is sort of on the, on the, the edge, like on the edge of where the weather patterns are going to be coming through. Yeah. Bad news for New Mexico, Arizona, maybe Colorado and Utah is tends to be drier. Southwest tends to get drier. So, Again, why I was saying those opening dates could be perhaps in jeopardy or questionable because of that. But again, it's who knows hmm. after this third El Nino, maybe things could shift up a bit, might not last as long. I don't know. I'm not a weatherologist, meteorologist. <laughs> There's a lot they talk about there, and it's like, all right, I have a lot to take in. Just going to read the Farmer's Almanac. It tends to be a little happier, but. Interesting to talk about. We shall see as we get a little bit closer. All right. So uh, last up in the uh, in the ski news, we have Taos net zero for twenty thirty. So they may um, have net zero snow for twenty twenty two. So twenty twenty two. That was the uh, that was the segue right there. Yeah, there you go. Twenty twenty two. Uh, for the good is the affirmation and our commitment to do better for the world. When we were certified as a B Corporation 2017, we pledged to protect our people, place, and planet and have fun while we do it. This has been a rewarding journey so far, but now it's over. We must constantly improve efforts and look for innovations because there are always, always, there's always room to do more. So Taos Ski, ski Area Valley, Taos Va Ski Valley is now 100% certified carbon neutral by the internationally recognized climate impact partners. So each year they re-earn the certification by a bunch of, you know, standards and, and evaluations. So um, net zero emissions mean that all greenhouse gas uh, are balanced globally by removal on an annual basis. Taos net zero emissions by 2030 goal considers all direct Scopes one and two and indirect scope three emissions under operational control. Removal of greenhouse gas emissions um, are completed through the combination of direct operational activities such as reducing building energy use um, and other steps. So as a step towards net zero by 2030, Towski Valley became certified carbon neutral in August of 2020. Uh, 2022, utilizing carbon offsets in its portfolio of carbon redu reduction strategies. So we're talking about Taos. Give a big shout out to yeah. our boy Tom Duke for sending this awesome book, Ski Pioneers, about Taos Ski Valley. Yeah, and there's, that's awesome. Look at that beautiful little inscription. All oh, yeah, other Tom. ski podcasts are boring, feral plagues, eating placenta, <laughs> and Putin. Boom, Putin. Yeah, so thank you, Tom. Thank you, Tom. So yeah, that's pretty uh pretty interesting. They uh See, they... I, I got a question about this whole thing. Yeah. This whole like buying carbon credits. Like yeah, that's this weird. Just, like, isn't this really just like rich so how do they... rich people kind of like virtue signaling while still getting to make a bunch of money 
because let's be honest when we break down if, if you really think that we're we as humans are making the planet worse wouldn't you not ski like think of all the the, the buildings the destruction of nature the running of the chairlifts running of the snow cats pumping the water to the snowmaking. Like, isn't that all like just bad? Like if you really were honest with yourself, it's all bad, right? Yeah. If you were one of these people who cared, if you, if they actually cared, like you say you cared, like, Oh my God, I don't want to hurt anything. You wouldn't, you wouldn't ski or, See, or you would just, even if you like were a, uh, I'm going to just, you know, I'm just going to, uh, my brain is not working cross country or I'm just going to, you know, tour. You're still going to use wax and is, is your wax. I know Swix makes some like, you know, non harming the environment wax. Yeah. But everything does some sort of, like there's no, there's a, there's some sort of biological neutral event. Everything has some sort of side effect. Well, yeah, effect, you're introducing something. stuff into areas that it's not supposed to be. Like that's the, uh, that's like the sunscreen that was killing the um, the reefs. Coral reef, yeah. Coral reefs. And now they actually have some new stuff they use in sunscreen. If you look at it, that is like they actually are certified that no, this doesn't doesn't have that same effect. So you can wear it if you go diving or something like that. Yeah, there's like certain places that when you go, yeah, there's like a different. It's like a mineral based sunscreen versus. Yeah the the standard type right so whatever chemical they put on like why controlled. were they using but i wonder why were they doing that in the first place yeah. right and like, again i'm looking at this like carbon offsite so you you buy these carbon credits and they have links to there's these efficient cook stoves in ghana and clear water and cooking in guatemala maybe i'm just an asshole maybe i'm just a pessimist all of this makes me feel like there's someone on that back end who's making money off of this. Well, if you think about it, like, so I'm looking at another site called climate trade and on here, you can actually buy carbon credits and there's different ways to buy it. They're saying you can buy directly from a developer. You can buy through a broker and then there's a climate trade marketplace. So is this so like what, buying stocks or NFTs or, or Bitcoin almost. or something? So what you're doing is you're taking your money and you're you're almost like laundering it through and buying the carbon. You're buying a credit off of somebody that's doing a carbon offsetting project. So let's say somebody's doing like I'm planting, you know, two thousand acres of trees. Well, instead of doing that for good and just because you're a good person or a good company, they're actually monetizing it and making money now. So they're like they do it and they it's almost like a GoFundMe, but instead of just getting the money, they're actually getting the money. And the company that's buying the credits is getting the offsetting credit for carbon neutralization. So you it's could have a weird. you could have like a a coal like my business is just burning coal. That's it. You could burn coal all fucking day, but if you make enough money you doing buy those it, credits, buy those credits. You could say you're carbon neutral, <laughs> right? Because in essence, ipso facto, I am buying these credits to fund carbon offsetting projects. And ipso facto, I'm offsetting my own footprint. So thus, I'm a good person. And I it's can show weird. off my little badge that I'm carbon neutral. Yeah, but it's kind of, it's game in the system, I think. Because like you said, it's not but truly creates, carbon neutral. But who creates these carbon credits? And who's making money off going, hey man, you're doing something not so good. I'm giving you this, which means it's now okay. Right. Now you get credit for it. But I don't think you could just buy credits i think it's part of what you can do like, based so you do it based on an activity that does lower carbon right so i think you have to do all the carbon stuff that you can carbon neutral stuff that you can and then you buy credits to make up that difference mm -hmm. so the question is is it possible to ever truly holistically be carbon neutral right like that's a that's a pretty big question can you offset your own it's kind of like you know how they say you go you go into the forest, you go camping, and you leave nothing behind, right? You take your right. garbage with you, you leave it clean, you don't leave any waste. Well, if you were to go camping, leave a whole bunch of garbage, but pay somebody to continue picking up garbage because that's their their business, <laughs> they make money, and then you can say, well, I'm 
I'm carbon neutral now. I didn't leave anything. Well, I offset what I left in the woods by, by paying the guy that's doing the project to pick up garbage in the woods. It's weird shit. And you can write off what you paid the guy. It's just a weird thing. It just seems like a, (laughs) it just seems like a bullshit way. If you have a ton of money to make you feel better about yourself. Like I remember seeing something about, you know, all these like, ass clown celebrities are talking about you know climate change and oh my god we should pledge to do more and then i showed a picture i saw the thing about like kim kardashian on her private jet and she's like i choose when i decide to be concerned about the environment it's like mm-hmm. yeah bitch you're not flying coach you're not like yeah. driving you're not so, like staying at home but that's the whole thing when she's grandstanding against somebody because they're you know offender of you know of the environment that's fine for her to take that position, but don't mind the fact that she showed up in a private jet. Yeah. You know, look With away. All her it's... bodyguards and her, you know, her, her Land Rover waiting for her dude. Like, and that's the thing. Like, I mean, I know I can admit it to myself. Like everyone's a hypocrite. Yeah. When it comes to this climate stuff, like everyone's a goddamn hypocrite. Oh, yeah. Cause you look at again, these carbon credits, you obviously need money to do this. Right. Look at everything that, you know, the Bill Gates's of the world are doing, you know, all this like buying of land and telling you like, you know, we got to be concerned about the environment and we got to reduce. And no. are they reducing? Are they doing less? Are they not traveling? Are they giving up the private jets? They're all full of shit, but You're they have enough money. more capacity for them to do what they want to do. And guess what? We as human beings are carbon based life forms. When they say they want to reduce carbon, guess what? They okay. want more people not to be here we are the carbon they want to reduce how many Remember people that. took that vaccine think about or just think <laughs> about the yellowstone club yeah out in out in big sky was it like 700 i think 700 members total or something if that it's like some crazy low number of members that belong to the yellowstone club mm. now if you will Think about Hunter Mountain on a Saturday in January. Or think about your favorite Vail Resort on a Saturday in January. Think how many people are there. Yeah. Think how nice it would be to have 700 people versus 10,000 people, however many there are there. Why do you think country clubs exist? Because people don't want to be around that many other people. And if you have enough money, you can avoid being around more people. That's what it comes down to. It's kind of weird though. Think about like, think about on a personal level, right? So somebody says, Oh, you're, you're such an idiot. You're using a foam coffee cup every day. Okay. Well, what, what should I use? Well, you should use a a paper cup, right? So they're calling you an idiot while they're, you're using one of those, foam cups, but they're using 15 paper cups a day and just throw them in the garbage. So the, their argument is, well, you know, this is, this is better for the environment. Yeah, but you're still consuming, right? So the consuming part is really one of the killers people don't understand. So you go to a better product, you know, paper versus the foam, but if you don't cut down your consumption and use just a regular coffee cup that you wash and that's really not being truly carbon neutral, right? High pollutant ski bums, Yeti mug. Exactly. You know, so, so what's really, you know, and it's not even carbon neutral. It's, it's, it's just the more sensible approach. It's, you know, the consumption is part of it in there, which people don't really take into account it's, a lot of times. There's so many other things that, again, are you growing the coffee beans inside the Starbucks you're buying your coffee from? There you go. Pretty sure they're being grown in Colombia, well, Ethiopia. So carbon neutral would Java. be similar to if you bought clothes on a consistent basis that was made in a sweatshop, but then donated to a Save the Children fund that got people out of sweatshops. <laughs> you're neutral, baby. Right? It's kind of even. You're trying to neutralize. You're, you're trying to undo what you did, what you're doing. So you're still buying the clothes that's made by the kids in a sweatshop. But then you're supporting an organization that gets kids out of sweatshops. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. You're going to penance. You know, like you did something bad and you pray to, you know, to get forgiveness. I just undid it. I reversed it. I'm like Superman. I I did around. I went backwards around the earth and made it made it all better again. 
I crossed my fingers when I was doing it. So it's like it didn't happen. Didn't happen. Right? It's, a, it's a mulligan. It's a, it's a freaking, it's a, <laughs> it's a uh, environmental mulligan. Environmental mulligan. Hey man, I, I wish we lived in a world where everything was powered by unicorn farts and our, as the one Simpsons uh, episode a billion years ago had, had Ed Begley Jr. And he goes, this car is powered by my own sense of self-satisfaction. Yeah. <laughs> Just drives away. Like, hey, maybe maybe we need to go through these kind of goofy phases till we get to something like that. Self-actualization. Our own actualization and our own acknowledgement that we are just these silly little pink monkeys on this spinning rock in a tiny little modicum of a nothingness in this universe. And once we realize that and accept that, that is able to power us to the next evolution of our species. I don't know, but let's, let's keep it real, man. We're all full of shit to some degree. Exactly. Skiing is a stupid activity, but it's also the most fun thing in the world. Are we going to give it up because we want to be completely carbon neutral and protect the earth? No, frankly, the earth has been here for 5 billion years. Again, I don't want to destroy the earth. I'm not going to, you know, just throw garbage everywhere and, you know, chuck uranium around. But also too, realize that this planet is a lot more robust than a few people. And I'm going to keep skiing and I'm going to keep enjoying it. And I'm going to keep supporting the ski industry any way that I can. Damn. There you go. And I, maybe one day we'll be rich enough as we get some carbon credits to make us feel better about ourselves. Hmm. Maybe. That's what happens. People want to feel better about themselves any way possible. It's like That's what it is. You know? And they want to flaunt it. Like it's not enough just to do the right thing. Know you're doing the right thing and be satisfied that you're a better person. You have to let every, everybody else know that you're a better person. And Dude. the problem is where it goes off the rails is people that really aren't better people want to flaunt that they are a better person by signaling that they're a better person and they want to rub it in everybody's face. And it's just bullshit. And that's, that's what's made social media so obnoxious the yeah. last three years is the virtue signaling. It is just like people just pander to groups, to organizations, to their friends, to whoever. And it's so cheap and so gross. Yeah. I, I remember when people were showing like they're, they're showing like their little Twitter handle, they'll put, like the the number of like the little shot icon next to it and like the little like mask icon and a Ukraine flag. And it's like, dude, like, what are you doing? Like, yeah. Who is this for? I saw the Ukraine flags going on. I'm like, do you even know anybody in Ukraine? Like what's, do you even know what's going on? They don't show it on TV anymore. Hardly. There is a beach club by us that has a Ukraine flag up. And I just like, I just laugh at it every, every goddamn time I see it. All I know is like, this is my new favorite meme. <laughs> I don't support the current thing with friggin' Pat Bateman from American yeah. Psycho. American Psycho, I love like, that. I, no, I don't. Like whatever you people are freaking out about, like I know it's just going to be some sort of like yeah. nonsense. And again, the climate change thing, there's just been this massive shift. Like if you look at like news headlines too, and I know Project Veritas gets a lot of crap. I don't know if you ever watched any of their videos. They're yeah. they're, they're very right wing and conservative. What they do is, for the most part is they get attractive women or men, depending on the uh, the person, their target, they go out to dinner with them or drinks or whatever. Like there was this, this like scumbag um, assistant principal in Greenwich, <clears throat> Connecticut, got this like, you know, hot girl to kind of like secretly film him. Talk about oh, how geez. they would never, they would never uh, hire a conservative teacher and all oh, 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 they're asking them all I know. questions. I know. I asked the right questions. I know. I know what they are. So uh, they, they do this to like all different kinds of people to get that's information. That's funny. Them. Yeah. And they um they did this to a guy at CNN. A uh, months ago. And he's like, yeah. He's like, as soon as this COVID crap is over, like we're gonna really push climate change hard. Wow. And it's like you fucking scumbags and now you're seeing lining the up that agenda yeah well, look at look at a lot of the headlines they're like oh these are all these strokes in young people like the uh, an effect of climate change it's like are you out of your fucking mind like this <laughs> maybe cover it was up, that fucking vaccine you just took we put in everybody that could have an effect too ah nah sorry we gotta go, we gotta go to break brought to you by pfizer 
So yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's uh dude, I'm telling you, if people really start critically thinking about everything that's gone down and you break things down and you follow the money to why why this is happening, who's running this, who's 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 pulling the strings in all this, it at least ask the questions. You know? Yeah. I don't know. I don't have the answer. I certainly don't. But I, I ask the questions and I kind of like I'm not gonna take anything at face value anymore because yeah, it's kind of ridiculous, right? I my whole life probably through my like early twenties, I took everything at face value and I was always scared and timid and (laughs) miserable and just afraid of authority. And then I don't know what the hell happened. I just, I just woke woke the fuck up. Like, woke up. Like in the matrix, you know, you take take the red pill and you just, everything is, is, is different. And you're like, this is harder, but it also makes a lot more sense. And I can see things for where they are. That's just, if you start asking questions, you you can't avoid that. Like you just start to see things in a completely different light. And oh yeah, sometimes I don't fucking want to see it. I want to be stupid. I want to just watch baseball all day and just keep score and just freaking drink a giant Wendy's cup of some shit and eat fourteen <laughs> double cheeseburgers and just fall asleep on the couch in my own piss and burger <laughs> grease. But I can't grease. anymore. Nice I touch. can't anymore. I wake up in the morning. I got stomach acid, like gurgling. It's almost like that's my alarm clock now. It's like stomach acid gurgles. Like, it's like go get that's up. That's the worst. The go get up and go get after it because no one's going to give it to you. You got to go after it and go kick some ass. Otherwise, you're just done. You can sit on your ice cream all day, an ice cream cake or two. Oh, you're Tear getting ice cream cake, aren't you? You're getting you're getting more cake, aren't you? No, I'm not getting more cake. But again, just ask the questions. It's just interesting. It's interesting. If nothing else, it's a thought experiment. Ask, Always question. Think Always about, question everything. You know what's fun to do? A fun thought experiment. Think about something that you are adamant about. And play devil's advocate and take the other side. And yeah. see if you can break down your own biases. See if you can challenge yourself to steel man your argument versus having a weak straw man argument. It'll yeah. make you either more confident in your opinions or challenge you to come up with better opinions. And I think if we all just did that a little bit more, instead of being so tied to a red or a blue or a one side or the other, and just think a little bit more and challenge ourselves on our ideas, I think we'd all be better off and just talk ask questions instead of you're a racist you're an asshole you're a nazi yeah. you're antifa you're this like just people have to be able talk. to talk it's just not labor day weekend i was at a party bunch of conservatives bunch of liberals you know what we did we drank and hung out at the pool and didn't fucking talk politics and it was a great day there you go most of that shit doesn't matter yeah. nancy pelosi mitch mcconnell they don't give a fuck about you Trust me, they don't give a fuck about they, you. They do not. They don't have us in their best interest. Even if you're in one of, if you're in their, your constituent of theirs, like you're in their domicile, their their uh, region, they don't give a fuck about you. Just just realize that. Be a grown up. Just a vote. You're just a voter. That's it. Yeah. Just a vessel. Just one of those bugs plugged into the wall, sucking your life forces. <laughs> Take the red pill. Take the Grow, in. evolve, think. Main topic. Boom. Ski news. That was it. Good. Rough. Dip. Heavy. Light. It is what it is. Snow it will is fall. Maybe. El Nino, La Nina. It's all over the place. Craziness. <laughs> so we're going to have a main topic again. And I'm totally cool with that. But yeah, we're rolling summertime. Through. So summer, summertime was, uh, was interesting as it always is. I know I had a ton of stupid things come up in terms of repairs in the house and air conditioning broke and oh yeah those are fun things right other just awful stuff health stuff whatever but here we are now i will tell you i came up with a new delicious snack of choice this summer this is a heavy one so butterbell we've been fans of the butterbell ever since nick introduced us many years ago love my butterbell i'm on my second one Oh, dude. So the Butterbell, for those who aren't in the know, it's a two-piece kitchen vessel. So the first part is just a little tub, like a little, like a saucer. The important part is the bell. 
So it's got a handle on top and it's got a little bell shaped opening to put your butter in. So the first part, the cup, you put water in and you take your bell with your butter in there and you put it inside and it creates a seal. So you magical butter contraction. room temperature, keep it outside of the refrigerator room temperature creates a seal, prevents any sort of mold or grossness bacteria from forming because of that water seal you have. Right. For some reason, great beach snack. My wife got those like pretzel crisps. You ever had those? Mm. You're going through like a pound of butter a day. Dude, I just I just take those crisps and I just <laughs> dip them in the <laughs> butter. I just dip it in the butter like a goddamn a butter savage. holding vessel. You don't even care about the chip. Bro. You're just trying to get em- enough butter in your face. Dude, I can't even tell you. There's there's been nights <laughs> where I've looked down at the butter bell like slowly, just been like, dude, do you know how much butter you I just consumed like a half a block of Kerry Gold with pretzels. That's, that's it. Just butter and pretzels. It's even worse if you're drinking margaritas. If you're drinking margaritas and you're eating that, like I I should be going to the Siete chips and salsa because that's relatively healthy. There you go. Oh, you're going to the butter bell. See, I leave pretzel. the butter bell. Butter bell is just when I want to spread some nice butter on something. I don't use it as a dip because that would be very dangerous. <laughs> you're using it as a dip. You're using butter as a dip. And I ordered that butter two- mixed in with something. Bro. Just butter. <laughs> and I ordered those two goddamn sourdough loaves for tomorrow. Like, I don't know oh, what's yeah. going to You may even recognize me next week. I'll be like, fatty <laughs> shit. You need to eat a, probably a, a pound of butter on each of those. Oh, my God. Slathering it in butter. It's so good. I fucking love butter. It's so good. Yeah. The butter bell is, is, is awesome, though. Yeah. I bet Queen Elizabeth had a butter bell or two. Oh, shit. She didn't even have to use it. She might have oh, had one of those. Dude, was one her of those, crown uh, just like a cauldron of butter? No, she has one of those little stick, uh, the stick guns where it like shaves it as press the <laughs> button and it shaves it for you. I thought it was like an oil squirter. It's like a warm oil squirter of just butter. No, you got to get that. Like you still got to get like, I like the cold one and then you get like really thin sliced cold one. Like that's nice. Cold butter. You can't spread cold butter though. I know you just eat it like that. You might as well just eat it by the stick. Just get the <laughs> stick, eat your pretzel, and eat the stick. That's what you're going to wind up doing. Dude, like pretzels with butter are like next level. Like I remember there used to be like a company. Was it Snyder's maybe? They used Did to you ever the try the butter, butter ones? flavored ones? Yeah, yeah it's like they butter still have them. flavor, which is okay. But no, they have them- the butter the butter snap ones or whatever they're called. Mm-hmm. Butter snaps. And they're like the waffle looking ones, but they're buttery. They're delicious. Those I love. Yeah. But imagine, why can't we hollow those some bitches out and have like butter inside, like like butter cruising through the pretzel itself, like a liquid filled. Yeah, <laughs> it's like the Twinkie of the pretzel. They just fill it with butter. Like you, you're just giving up at this point. How about but Twinkies I want to... filled with butter? If I, I, the key is the pretzel's got to be warm. <laughs> to keep How about the butter big pretzel flowing? sticks with butter inside? Oh, like the long rods. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. Or even the soft baked ones with the butter, the molten butter inside. So good. So good. So that, that's been my like summer treat Dang. of choice. Still trying to work out, still focusing, thinking about skiing a lot. Uh, like I said, we do have a bunch of cool interviews that we're planning over the next couple months. They're all just sort of, we've had some people we've reached out to, some people who've reached out to us. So this will be scheduled. Um, Again, once once October starts rolling, we're going to have a lot of interviews going again, which should be fun. And then once we get skiing, maybe we'll have some trip reviews. We'll see how things pan out. we got a big announcement coming up for November, but still too early. Still uh, working out some details, So, but there's some cool yeah. stuff on the horizon. Mario, how about you? Any, any summer highlights that could be related to skiing in any way, shape, or form? Uh, I'm trying to think. See, that's why the summer's been a dog, dog, dog time for me because it's just been hot and not a lot of ski talk. I did get a lot of good Helly Hansen stuff this this summer. So not a sponsor, not a sponsor, but that's that's like the only ski related thing is I got a lot of stuff from them. <laughs> um, other than that, just kind of planning. I paid off my uh, my trip for January to go to Val Thorens, so that's go. happening. It's on it the list. Happening. 
So that that was very exciting. I did that a few weeks ago. I was like, I'm just pulling the trigger and paying for it. If I got to cancel, I'll cancel. But we're not canceling this year. COVID's at bay. There you go. Suck it, COVID. Suck it. Suck it, COVID. Um, yeah, that's about it. Now I'm looking at all the other trips that are going on, trying to figure out which ones I can make or maybe not make. But it's still hard to plan that far ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I just – Evo had a big sale over Labor Day weekend. So I picked up a bunch of stuff for my son for skiing. Nice. Got him a new jacket, new pants, a bunch of ski socks. Because, you know, these freaking kids grow so much. Like, when you're an adult, like, you have to reach, like, you know, your t- early 20s. You're like, this is the size I'm going to be. So you can, yeah. like, spend a little extra money, get, like, a nice jacket, nice pants, whatever. Yeah. But these kids, it's like, all right, what's, like, the best thing at the cheapest price? Like, what's, what's like, right. 80 are going to grow it in, like, a few months, right? He They're wears done. it, like, a season. Yeah. You know? And then I got my wife a uh, a new puffer jacket, a Helly Hansen as well, but it goes down all the didn't way. You get like a full length one. Yeah, I didn't get the. I love my Teresia one, but she wanted something. It was like she wanted the full length one because she's a girl and she likes it covering. She gets cold, so my butt um, gets cold. That's exactly it. So yeah. she covers the butt now. I'm warm that up for you, girl. That's right. You can sit up, sit right here. Come to daddy. <laughs> I'm warming that up for you. <laughs> Warm that up, girl. <laughs> um, so we got one of those, which is good because uh, we go to a lot of hockey rinks and it's cold in there. So it did come in handy already. Nice. Even before the ski season. But that. yeah, so that was the that was the big purchase. I bought new socks last year, and it's weird. Like I realized last year when I was when I bought the socks, number one, I got them at a discount. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna buy. I got them through our media discount. But um, I realized how old my socks were. I was going through my my <laughs> my ski sock drawer, and I was like, "Holy shit, these God are damn. old! God damn, these got to be like 15 years old." You know, <laughs> like I wore them a million times. And I'm like, they don't unless they're ripped. Why would you get rid of them? But those socks could talk, right? I was like, "All right, time to start changing some up." So I got rid of a bunch of them and donated them because they were still good to me. They're still good. Is it weird to donate socks? They're it's ski socks. It's extremely weird. Donate socks, but you know, I'm sure someone who's cold will be very happy to have them. I tell you what, they're warm as shit. Some of those were like the old padded ones. Now they go to like the the really slim ones. You know, not not thick. They're very thin, but then they have the like the comfort zones that like hug your feet. Yeah. So I went to all those, but the old ones I'm looking at, they were like the old, really warm but puffy, thick ones. Like I'm like nobody wears these anymore. <laughs> Although I still have one pair that I will never get rid of because they're nice and puffy and I wear them when my boot insides get stretched out. There you go. Like that's like a day three sock, you know, stretching out that boot, (laughs) stretching out that boot. I got a, I got a sock, um, a sock plan when I go on like a seven day trip, (laughs) there's like, I save the fat ones for the day three, then day four, I usually take off. So I do, you know, skinniest skinny, and then take a day off, and then you can go back to whichever ones you wash. It's like sockonomics. Sockonomics. I do a load of laundry in the middle of the, the trip if I can, and that that keeps my pack until like three or four days, and I'm I'm good. Yeah, it's like helpful hints from Heloise. I, I tell you, you gotta have a you gotta have a plan, a packing plan, and like a living plan when you go, and then you just you free ball, then you just roll. Gotta have that plan. I just bring a few Tide Pods. A dryer sheet or two, and then that's it. I'm ready to go. You got some snack Tide Pods. You got some actual laundry <laughs> Tide Pods. That's right. <laughs> the leave behind Tide Pods that you just leave out for somebody yeah. to snack on. You never yeah. know. Um. Yeah, but that does come in handy. There's a lot of a lot of the hotels now. They have like a little laundry room. You can do something in there. All you need is think about it. you're on you're on a trip. You do one load of laundry. That's like that's doubling what you what you brought with you because carrying it you got to think about too like if you got some weight restrictions in terms of your luggage yeah how much do you really want to bring you want to bring when five got, pairs of socks right like and an you animal. got skis and boots and a ski bag like it after a while you're like i just i don't want to carry anything else and what if you lose that bag like i did oh okay. but i was smart because in my carry-on i've learned over the years 
you got to pack all the important stuff you need. So the boots, ski pants, and ski jacket were with me in my carry-on. Mm -hmm. The ski bag was the one that got lost. And then I had other clothes in the, in the uh, regular suitcase that I did get. So that didn't get, it was just a ski bag. So I didn't pack everything in the ski bag, even though I could have. I actually mm. spread it out, which is kind of, that's again, you got to have a little plan. Got to have a plan. You know, if you get stuck in a city or your plane gets diverted, all you have is whatever's in your carry on. You know, they lose yeah. all your luggage. Carry on. You got to have something to do. Yep. And one thing, too, I've heard people do is if you have an Apple phone, an iPhone, is to get those air tags. Yeah. And put those in your luggage when you're flying. Well, the airlines do good job. I know we usually fly United and it actually tracks your bag. So when you go on to your uh, ticket now, you can mm -hmm. go in, it says track bags. It tells you if it made the flight that you're on. So you'll know when you're on the flight, like shit, my plane, my, my bag didn't make it. It's still yeah, in the, the air tag actually don't exactly coordinate wise where it is. Right. Where it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that, that's kind of neat. But, uh, yeah, now I just I use the tracking and you know try not try not to. Uh, it's always hard when you go to a small place. So the the problem that and I'm sure everybody knows that this has happened to, is when you go from a big market and you go to like a small place. You go depending on the airline. If you're you're usually not flying straight over there, you're going through some kind of hub. Well, on a ski vacation, if everybody's bringing their boots and skis, it's not all going to fit in some of these small planes. So a lot of times, like when Crested Butte, when we went last year, I was like, I can almost guarantee from the size of this plane, <laughs> the amount of shit that these that everybody brought, that it's not going to fit on the plane. And sure enough, we didn't get our stuff. It came in a later flight. Damn. So they were actually saying in the in the airport, they were like, yeah, they were like, a lot of the stuff that gets left throughout the day gets brought on the later flight, which isn't that full. And they just pack it full of cargo. Well, they were canceling the later flight because of snow. So people were going days without their stuff because it just, like it just kept not making that last flight because they kept canceling the last flight. So I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty fucked up. Yeah. Ski butlers. There so, for you. There you go. So you get your skis. <laughs> so uh, Val Turin trip, I'm, I'm going to rent there because I'm like, I don't want to lug my skis all the way to Europe. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I've done it before and it was okay. But I'm like, you know what? I could beat on their skis for a while. There you go. Plus, it's a different skiing. You know, Fun you, chance to try out new stuff, too. Yeah, you try out new stuff. Live a little. Jeez. I was thinking about selling my skis or giving them away at this point. Wow. I don't know. I think I'll keep the DPS, but I don't know. I got, I got two good pair. They are getting old, though. I look at them and I'm like, you old-ass skis. But I can't justify buying new skis yet. No. I don't know why. Just can't do it. I always can do that. I think I'd want to get rid of these and then buy new skis. If there's any sponsors out there that want to hook us up. That's, that'd be great. We're happy to. Some, yeah. We're happy to uh, take you on and try out your stuff. All right. Well, if you got any other tips or anything you want to share with us, hit us up. Ski bum podcast at gmail.com. Under the ropes. Kind of a fun one, nice and lighthearted, nothing too gross. Theo dropped the knife. <laughs> dog walker begs armed pup to surrender weapon. Man, that dog looked like it was gonna cut her heart out. I don't know if you heard this story at all, but it's actually like a viral clip from this past weekend. There was this dog in, uh, I guess they're out in Ohio. <laughs> Theo, a fluffy and innocent-looking Great Pyrenees, gave his dog walker plenty of agita this week by picking up a sharp knife while out, for, on a, out on a stroll. I thought he grabbed a stick as usual, Matt Paparaki, who was walking his buddy's dog for a second time that day in Sylvania, Ohio, told Storyful. Things were hunky-dory until the pup had shoved his face into a pile of sticks and branches where he came across the sharp cutlery. My eye caught the glint of metal and it was instant panic. 
In a state of tension, Paprocki barked a stern command to the dog. Theo, drop the knife. (laughs) The picture is hilarious. It's basically this adorable little fluffy Great Pyrenees with holding a knife like he's holding the uh, the knife is just sticking out of his mouth it's yeah. just sticking straight out of his mouth <laughs> straight out and he's looking around yeah. and the thing is just <clears throat> right there so yeah and he said the owner's friend who noted that the great pyrenees are notorious for not letting go of their findings <laughs> and resorted <laughs> to bargaining <laughs> so that dog think about like a lot of dogs will get something mine mine will get something in his mouth and then run to you and like put it at you and, and like, you know, kind of play around. If this dog does that, it's stabbing you. It's stabbing you to death. <laughs> yeah. And not that it wants to, it just doesn't yeah, even it, know what else to do. Like it thinks it's doing something nice and happy and fun and thinks it's playing around. Nope. So ours has this, um, it's like a yak, uh, yak cheese stick and he puts it in his mouth and he holds it like that knife and the little piece is sticking out. It looks like he's he has a cigar. So he's running around the house all day with that thing. It's like he's got a little cigar he's just running around. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Oh, that's pretty funny. But yeah, the pictures of this dog just with the knife sticking out is hilarious. They have a little video. Did you see the video of it? Yeah. Cute. And the little dog's just looking like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the guy said he was like extremely unprepared for the moment and he had to. Uh, spring into action uh, so i said luckily she saw it i guess the owner not the person who was walking the dog said luckily she saw it came within a few minutes and ran into her house to get food to trade whipped cream didn't do it salmon did the uh, dropped the knife and she grabbed it <laughs> but funny. yeah imagine like dog just goes into this pile of like just rubbish sticks whatever and comes out with a knife dog could have gotten I- really hurt I have it with my dog all the time. He ate something yesterday and puked his guts out. Um, We have a big homeless population around since we're in a seasonable climate. And they leave a ton of crap. Like, there's garbage cans around. They just don't want to put it in there. So they just leave it around. They get, we're near a food bank. They get the stuff there. And it's like, then they just leave it everywhere. And it's like, come on, man. You got free food. Can you, can you at least put it in the, you know, the trash in the garbage. So there was like, Mel and I actually picked some some of it up yesterday. I we do that all the time because um, there's stuff that's like you know we'll find um, needles and stuff or no, we don't really find needles. Sometimes we find like the um the needles from the um like diabetic stuff. Uh, not really shooting up needles, but um, you know they'll they'll diabetic get like heroin. A, yeah, they'll get like a can <laughs> of tuna or something like that with the pull tab. And leave the can there. So you got like the sharp edges around. So we always worry about the dog just going in. And they don't know. They look at something. They're like, hey, it smells pretty good. Let me go bite it. So always got to watch your dog. What they put in their mouth. Because they're quick too. Oh, I know, right? But this is cute. That's kind of something that I I would imagine easily happening. Adorable. Yeah. Didn't go on a murderous spree. Everyone's okay. Could have gone on a murder spree. That's you got to watch out. This dog Could've. might have tendencies. That's crazy. Dog, yeah. yeah. Hopefully it, it wasn't a rescue dog because it was a rescue dog, some pit bull. Like, you never know. Start raging. Yeah. yeah. Getting revenge. All right. Well, that about wraps up the podcast for the week. Thanks for checking us out. Find out more. Skibumpodcast.com. Send us an email, skibumpodcast at gmail.com. We're on your favorite socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, untapped, at Podcast. We're also on YouTube. Thank you so much for listening. More stuff coming. Big news, big interviews. Big news. It's going to be a, a fun, fun free ski season. So thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Stay high, stay fluting. See you.